When we think of travel, we think of faraway places and exotic locations. When most of the time, we've yet to experience the treasures in our very own backyard. I'm Zandra Oi. I'm 100% Malaysian, and I'm ready for an adventure in my own country, starting with Ipoh. Ipoh is the third largest city in Malaysia with more than 700,000 residents, but it's still an old Asia gem, uncluttered by tourists and touts. One of the rare places in Malaysia where you find the most enticing food at every corner. One of the best things about taking the train to Ipoh is the sight of the beautiful architecture of the train station as you arrive. Evidence left behind from the British colonial era. Hi, Hi Julie. Julie! It's always good to see a familiar face. Born and bred in Ipoh, Chef Julie's an award-winning Western chef, the best person to explore oh, really Paraguay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very comfortable, really quick, very convenient. Sandra, you know there's so many things happening now in the old section of Ipoh. The old town is now what they call the new old town. This is a truly beautiful building. Yeah. It's the city hall. And it used to be the police headquarters in 1940s. Right. And I heard that there's a little tunnel that goes from this place to the high court. That's where you transport all the prisoners down there. Do you think it still exists? Um, maybe, I don't know. They never found out. It's beautiful, huh? Yeah. And they maintain it so well. Yeah. This is a beautiful clock tower as well. It's called the JWW Birch Clock Tower in memory of the first British resident that was here during the colonial era. Yes, I remember reading yeah. history class. Look at it, how majestic it is as well. Beautiful, huh? It's done by the same architect as the t city hall that we went to right. just now. No yeah. wonder the architecture is Look very similar. Look at the paintings and all that. Yeah. You know those bells? Mm -hmm. They actually are from Big Ben in London. Really? Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And the chimes. The sculptures are so detailed. This is a beautiful lane, isn't it's it? It's so gorgeous. And nice and shady. We've put yes. so much greens in this section of Ipoh now, the old town. Now we've revived it. You know, Look at those cute little boxes which I'm doing for my apartments upstairs. Right, so you're this starting a new service, service apartment. Wow. Yeah, it's called TOB Apartments. Right. It's very raw. Wooden cabinets and my own little handcrafted lampshades and everything. Wow. Yeah. And did you plant these trees yourself? Oh, yes. Because it blends in yes. with what's already there. But actually, you know? anything goes. You just put whatever is on the wall around this lane, it just fits in. The paint yeah. and then there's like bricks in the middle yeah. of concrete. Yeah. And uh, we now have Christy Collection here. She's a lovely girl. She makes all the little trinkets, bracelets, necklaces, earrings. Made in Yes. I'm truly really happy that Concubine Lane has been preserved, you know, by the new owners. You know, it's always changing, but at least they have kept the frontage, everything as it is. It used to be when the tin miners, after a long day's work, they just come here, relax, have a drink, you know, everything else is done here. It used to be like the hot spot. Ipoh Old Town. I can imagine, you know, yes. all these little windows to open up and the ladies leaning out, yeah. talking to people. So now, Ipoh Old Town, we also have like uh, the Yasmin Ahmad Museum and then we have a small little retro shop called Bits and Bobs. And then the old barber that used to be in one of the old shop lots, mm -hmm. he has come back and now he has a little one-seater barber shop. Chef Julie takes me to one of the new cafes right in the heart of Ipoh's old town. So, what have you been up to? Okay, the last time a we came lot, to Ipoh... A lot of things, actually. You so have much. a restaurant, you have a hotel, yes. a boutique hotel, and now you have three new restaurants. It's taking a lot of my time, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. This quirky cafe we're sitting in is called Buku Tiga Lima, literally translated to Triple Five Book referring to the iconic notebooks widely used in Malaysia back in the old days, where people would write their tabs down at local grocery stores. 
References to the past are everywhere, and sometimes nestling in the most unexpected places. It is Chef Julie's signature to combine clashing elements into her decor, always turning them into works of art that tells a story. This used to be a barber shop, so I've left everything as it is with the sign, the name of the barber from before and things like that. Just give me anything, I can just make something out of it. I know, but where do you get all the ideas and inspirations from? Because, okay, you're a chef, right? Yeah. So really, your talent lies in the kitchen. But yes. then I look at the decor and you do it yourself. And I'm thinking, my, my goodness, you're an interior designer as well. I've still got a lot of things that I can do, but I haven't got the time to do it. I'm so excited about it all, you know. Yeah, so for you, right, when you actually create a new restaurant, the decor is as much part of the food. Yes. I mean, it inspires the food that you create as well, right? Like here in Buku Lima, I just wanted something that's very like. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing now, crepes, uh, savory crepes, and then after that, sweet crepes, you know, all with the recipes of my own. And then I added a little bit like bigger sandwiches. I love breads, I love sandwiches, so this is one of my favorites. And crepes, I mean like, okay, I'm going to try this. This is hazelnut. Yeah, it's chocolate hazelnut with uh, vanilla bean creme brulee. Right. And yeah. in Ipu, has anybody done crepes before? They do a lot of pancakes and things like that. Mm. But uh, what I've done this way is not the round crepes. It's actually a long one whereby I just fold it up with the fillings inside. So I have to tell you, it tastes so good. Actually, crepes, you've got to eat it quick. Like yeah. any other pancakes okay, and okay, things I'm like eating, that, yeah? I'm I'm eating, eating. you got to eat it quick because the sides are the best part. It's the crispy, crispy part, yes. as well. Even though Chef Julie makes the most wonderful crepes, she still has a favourite local dessert she wants me to try. As night falls, we set up for a different kind of crepe in Ipoh. Uh, Uncle Tan, uh, I've been uh, here always uh, getting the apple, take away, sit in the cup, immediately eat. Yeah, but what is apple? Because I have seen it before, there are a lot of people who buy it. But it's not something else. No, it's not something else. It's like this one, and it's like this one. And very thin and crispy. Ball from the so is it kind of like crepes? Uh, right. Thinner, thinner than crepes. Really? Yeah, with no filling. As it is. So, oh, it's nice and hot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, that's in crispy, hey, right? So it's very good. 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 不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃不要吃
period decor to actually put back into the rooms. Most of the decor that you see, which are old, are really old. They are actually <laughs> real pieces that is put into the hotel. That's why we took almost uh, two years to actually source all the items. When it comes to food options, there are two restaurants, both as beautifully designed and furnished as the hotel. It seems that there are no expense spared, yet the rooms are surprisingly affordable. I wouldn't want to be uh, associated with the term five star because a lot of people would think that basically we have drivers and we have swimming pools, which we don't. What they do have is a gym, a laundry area equipped with a washing machine and dryer, and a lounge for guests to relax or unwind in. The motto of the hotel is very simple. We have a tagline that says, come as strangers, leave as friends. Ah, yes. I see that everywhere in the room. It's really nice. Yes. You know? And we also thought of making it into a big house. So you have the uh, facilities of your home, where this is basically your home now in Nepal. Yeah. Leaving my home for a bit, I'm off to meet Chef Julie as she takes me behind the scenes to see how the most divine kaya pastries in Ipo are made. This is the fantastic kaya pop that I really love. Look at that! Yeah, it's not only this, look. Sin Eng Hyung have been in business for over 40 years, selling a wondrous array of every biscuit, pastry and cookie imaginable. There's a myriad of delights all lined up. Lotus paste pastries, fragrance biscuits, traditional sponge cakes, just to name a few, all fresh out of the oven. People just come and take away and then they have a long queue most of the time. Wow. Yeah, but this one is really nice. Pastry is very flaky and the filling, the kaya filling, I love kaya. Yes, <laughs> you see the, the problem I have with a lot yeah. of kaya puffs I have outside is that when you bite into it, there's more pastry than filling. Yes, but you, not this one. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, maybe it's I should got like a, a spoonful or more on it. Do you mm. like it? Yeah. Look at it. A lot layers of and layers mm. of it. Come, we ask the lopan. See whether they can show us how to make it or not. The owner of the shop is Mr. Ng. He learned the art of making a few simple pastries and candies as a 17-year-old apprentice. He's 80 now and still actively makes many of the pastries himself. The kaya pastry is his own recipe. Oh, this uh -huh. is the meat and the sugar. You see, they roll it, uh -huh. then it's easier for them to portion it out. How do you do it? Is it easy or easy? Because these are the same things that you can do. Because the food is not so good. For us to make pastries, you have to make it yourself. The chef has to make it. But once you look at a pastry, you can see whether it's commercially made by the machine or handmade. Now you can put it in here. Even though Chef Julie is a great pastry chef herself, this is her first time trying her hand at kaya pastries. I did a whole thing, huh? Am I? Ah, size, size. I got your size. Oh, you come on. Oh, come on, lah. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, I'm in front. Ah, okay. Come on, lah. Ah, okay. 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 Because this is mixed with water, flour and water. This is flour with uh, oil. See, he's putting bits of it in there. Oh, is this what makes the kaya puff mm. crispy? Yes, uh. but we still have to roll it, you see? Then he rolls it, so you have layers of it. The next step is to slather silky smooth homemade kaya, coconut jam, onto the dough. Mr. Ng's kitchen produces a few kilos of kaya a day just for these pastries. The shop easily produces close to 2,000 kaya pastries a day. On public holidays and festive seasons, they make double that amount with a relentless queue that only ends when they sell out.你睇我咁樣做，覺得容易冇？誒，我睇到唔會好艱難啦。誒，每個人啊，你可以試下，但係睇嗰做得錯啊，嗰同我講嘅啫嘛。嗯，OK，我會教你做，慢慢。哦，
Ừ. À, à, trong can. Ông cầm trong can. Ờ cầm trong can phát sóng mấy gì? Cầm bung ngân cá yang mà chọn chơi. Oh, I like it. Logic. Okay, okay. The difficulty doesn't lie in the technique, but in the speed and consistency. Oh, yeah. Why? Mà chủ liền có thú cầm sân phu à. Thế thì chủ yếu chim kế gò à. Ồ, quý phố, quý phố, quý phố. Quý là ai chủ quan hoi à. Quý là chủ yếu chim kế gò à. Once the pastries are baked, they get sent out immediately and are usually sold piping hot within minutes. People always say that the key to great food is to see where the locals eat. And looking at the folks constantly stopping by the shop, they are absolutely right. My food exploration continues with the best street food in Ipoh, as well as the most beautiful cuisine whipped up by Chef Julie Song. Street food and coffee shop delights, one of the best things about mornings in Malaysia. Chef Julie takes me to her favourite Tong Sui shop in Ipoh, famous for all kinds of Chinese desserts made fresh every morning. This is my favourite Tong Sui place. Wow, look at the menu. Hey, come on, 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 come on. Making tong sui is a laborious process, especially for the delectable creamy peanut soup. The peanuts are first fried for half an hour to bring out the fragrance. Once shelled, they stay in the grinding machine for four hours before slowly boiling over a low charcoal fire. And that's only the work involved for the making of one tong sui. To make the vast variety of soup desserts they sell, Mr. and Mrs. M start the process at 5 every morning. Besides soup desserts, Mr. and Mrs. Ng also make their own egg tarts and traditional pastries. I wonder how many calories go into a bowl. Oh, don't think about it. Oh, don't think about it. Just indulge. The way to eat tong sui is anything goes. Whichever you want to try first, you do that. Okay. This is Chef Julie's rule. Actually, a lot of people now, the generation that is so used to this kind of food, they always have this for breakfast. Your generation or my generation? Everyone. My generation. One thing's for sure. Good foods, good food. Transcending time and generations. Now, just to prove how sweet Chef Julie's tooth is, she insists I try a local cream caramel dessert. You know, cream caramel, everyone knows how to make it, but it's not as easy as you think it is. It's just so nice to have just one girl. Over here, this little place that I, I'm taking you to serves the best Chinese cream caramel. It has been very popular for a long, long time. I've been eating it also when I was very young. They do it a little different from what we do because they only use milk and eggs and a bit of vanilla essence. So I'm going to let you try it. Thank you. Thank you. This is me. Mmm. It's really smooth. It's nice. Oh, so good. And after all the sweet decadence, it's time for a savoury lunch. Mee goreng is a dish common enough in Malaysia. But good mee goreng is harder to come by. Chef Julie's found one of the best in the cafe mee goreng stall. Andrew, you know I love noodles, so yes, this yes. is my favourite mee goreng. Why do you like this mee goreng so much? It's different and it's all cooked special by the jam. I've been here so for many it's years. The best one, lah. Best one, really right? Best. This is the yeah. best one. Uh -huh. I think the frying makes a lot of difference. Uh -huh. Yeah, he okay. must put uh -huh. enough ingredients in it and all. Here, the pasambu is also very nice. Something like rojak, but it's called pasambu. What's the difference between pasambu and rojak? Rojak kita orang panggil untuk buah buah juga rojak. Pasambu kita panggil untuk cucu lah. Kira tofu, cucu kelapa, cucu udang. Lagi keropok, 
All the fried stuff. Uh, <laughs> you make your own sauce? Ah, uh, yes. Oh, apa uh, dalam sos? Mustahak itu yang penting. Ubi kredit lagi oh. gula hitam, gula merah, gula uh. putih. Ada cili ya? Uh, cili, ya, udang kapai, uh. kacang lagi, pijan, sigret okay. lagi lah, macam-macam <laughs> lagi ada. You try it, Sandra. I'll order for you, okay? okay? Uh. Satu pasang bowl, okay. then mi goreng satu. Pedas. 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 <laughs> Do you want extra egg? They have ah, extra. Yes, please. Tambah itu telur. Tambah telur. Ah. Okay, actually Pula. sudah kenyang, tapi okay. tak apa, makan saja lah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. 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 Sedap, sedap. Ah. Ipo isn't just filled with an incredible plethora of street food, but fun, quirky cafes like Chef Julie's Burbs and Giggles, where the decor is as colorful and unexpected as the name. Burbs and Giggles comes across as casually impulsive, where stunning murals adorn the walls. It's certainly a feast for the eyes as well as the stomach, although the food and heavenly desserts that Chef Julie is so famous for is just as distracting. We're going to make a special soft shell crab burger Ooh. just for you because you love I it. I love, love it. it. Look at yes. that. Okay, so I've got the batter. Is this like the Japanese tempura or is it uh, different? A little similar, but uh, it's my secret ingredient. Oh, okay, okay. Make sure that the heat is just right. All right. And the oil. Okay. okay. I'm going to grill some onions. I'm going to get my burger ready as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got a grill on both sides. Okay. Mm. Let me just check this. I'm just going to turn your Wow, look at the colour. Okay. So what happens if you over fry the crab? It'll be bitter. Mm. I'm going to make a floppy egg. Do you want one or two eggs? How uh, do you know the answer to that? <laughs> one more? Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to put a bit of salt and pepper on it. So this is what chefs do in the kitchen, right? You do like a few things at the same time? Oh yes, you have to. Good. I want you to cut the tomato. This is the base, all right? You smear the sauce on it. Okay. So this is tzatziki, okay? It's got capers, it's got like a pickled cucumber. Yogurt? Which is gherkins, yes, yogurt. I'm going to put the onions that we caramelized. Okay, you can put your tomatoes now. Okay. Now comes the egg on top of the tomato. Okay. See the crispiness of it? Beautiful. You know, in Archie Comics, Jughead eats like really thick burgers, right? And yeah. then he bites into it. Yeah. So how do, I, how do I eat this? What's I'm the proper way of eating this? Do I take the whole burger up and bite it? Or yes. do I have to cut it into small pieces? No, no, no. Don't cut it into small pieces. Really? Because you won't get a bit of everything then. What you do is that you press it down because uh -huh. the bun is really soft. Hold it together like that. And put it in your mouth. And then... Brilliant. Yes. Let's take this out. Wonderful. Yay. Okay. Let's go on. For our dinner party tonight, Chef Julie is cooking a few more dishes. Smoked duck with mint chili pasta, where thick slices of duck are perfectly paired with pasta made fragrant by thinly sliced mint leaves and fresh chili. Generous slices of fresh watermelon are evenly mixed with homemade tomato jam, a dose of olive oil and tossed with mescaline salad. Sliced meat and a generous portion of prawns and mussels make for a tiltillating dish of paella, cooked and simmered with saffron-infused rice. And of course, dinner at any of Chef Julie's restaurants wouldn't be complete without dessert. Triple chocolate cheesecake for tonight's party. City. Both the new town and the old town are lined with buildings of beautiful British colonial architecture, just unkept enough to be authentic. The streets, however, are the true wonders of this city. The shotgun-style storefronts that are nearly always completely open, with only old-fashioned garage doors that remain hidden once pulled up. They provide window after window into every element of every shop, and all we have to do is walk past to see its stories. 
Ipo is understated, and in that lies its beauty. Its gems are probably Malaysia's best kept secrets, like your favorite restaurants you want to recommend to everyone, but at the same time, you're a little reluctant because you like having it to yourself. There's still so much more to see and experience in Ipo. One can't possibly do the city justice in just a few days. So I'm off to join the rest for dinner, and I'll see you again for our next Ipo adventure. Thank you.